Hey guys, Thumper here. Welcome to another video for DCS Liberation. Uh, today we're going to be talking about air wing configuration and why it's something that you might want to be thinking about. So as we already know from the previous videos, anytime we want to set up a new campaign, we can come up here, hit new game, and as we go through these screens, there's a whole bunch of different settings we can configure. Right now, we're not interested in any of the stuff we've already covered. We're just interested in the final screen. So whenever we get to the end here and we hit finish, it'll take a minute and load. So here we have air wing configuration. We have a tab for blue and we have a tab for red. And here we can configure where all of the different squadrons are on our map and what jobs they are able to do. So like, let's look at just to start off our A-10s. So we come over here in the main information panel here. Uh, there's, we can set names, we can assign nicknames, we can change liveries, default liveries. If we have them, you can even put your own liveries in here. You can change the size of the squadron. You can change their primary task. And you can change the base that they're operating out of on the given campaign that you're on. And over here to the right, you can change which missions the computer will auto assign for these given squadrons. So if I don't want these A-10s to do, you know, OCA at all, I can just turn those off and I won't have to worry about the computer assigning it. And we can even remove the squadron if we don't like it. At the same time, we can come over here. We can hit Add Squadron. We can go back up. We can put a new A-10 squadron in. And we can see we've overpacked this airport, which, you know, this is helpful to know because if you have over full air bases, you actually can't start the campaign. Ever since um, 9.0, you can't overfill air bases because of the way the squadron rules work, which is gonna be relevant for later. So we can configure all of this for both the blue side and the red side. So why do we care about this? Well, it's a little goofy because on one hand, liberation is a tool that's made to randomize things for us. It's made so you can generate a mission and not know what's going to happen specifically in the mission. On the other side of the coin, uh, we kind of need to know when we set up the campaign, we kind of need to know what roles certain aircraft are assigned because if you don't know that, there's a couple of weird issues you can run into as the game progresses. To better understand what it is I'm talking about, it's going to be helpful to understand how the mission director makes its decisions when setting up a new mission. I don't know if mission director is the correct term, but I just mean the computer that sets up the missions anytime you hit begin campaign or anytime you accept the results of a mission that you've flown. So far as I can tell, at least from my experiences, it seems like the mission director makes its decisions with the following priority. So first it's going to focus on AWACS coverage, followed by transports and logistics, so transports and refuelers, followed by RCAP coverage. Underneath that is going to be SEED, underneath that is DEED, and then ESCORT, and then everything else like CAS, STRIKE, FIGHTER SWEEP, all of that stuff seems to fall pretty low on the priority list, at least from what I can tell. So we know how the computer treats its priorities. Now, how does it decide what jet is better than another at doing a given job? Well, there's actually a way we can find that. Now, guys, for this next part, it's going to be really helpful for you to have Notepad++ on your computer. Uh, this is a really good tool to have in general. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to actually customize squadrons. And this is going to be pretty much a necessary tool to have. So. Um, try to get it downloaded and, you know, it's definitely a good tool to have when messing with anything DCS related.
So if we want to find out what aircraft are preferred for what jobs, we can actually come up here to our liberation folder and we can go into our resources folder. And then we can look at units and we can click on aircraft. And then here we can find, you know, any aircraft we want to know more about, like, let's say like our F-16, I fly a lot of F-16. Let's click edit with notepad plus plus. And here we can see a whole beautiful description of what the aircraft is. We could see some stuff for, I guess, how the game calculates fuel, how much fuel is needed for any given flight. But uh, as we scroll down, what we're concerned with here is we can actually see scores for various tasks. So we can see that the F-16 is scored really high for battle air interdiction, cast, any, basically any ground attack role seems to be scored really high. It's scored kind of like medium for air-to-air -air roles. And it's scored low for seed, but this is relative to other aircraft. So all of these scores are going to be relative to other aircraft. So, so when I recorded this, I said it scores high on some things, low on some things. That's just the numbers look high and low, but you got to think about it in relation to other aircraft. Like that F-16 has 170 for seed, but 170 is probably the highest amount there is for seed. So it's very good at it. So you got to compare it to other aircraft. It's something you kind of have to check various aircraft. If you want to know more about how the computer is going to select what aircraft is going to select, it's something where you'll have to kind of bring up multiple and look at them. Like, let's look at the F-18. Edit with Notepad++, and we scroll down, and we can see that, like, for example, the F-18 scores slightly lower than the F-16 does on seed capability, but it might be better at certain things as we look at these numbers. So it's just something where you'll have to compare various aircraft to each other to get an idea of what the computer is going to want to do with them. So anytime I set up a campaign, I'm going to have two major priorities for the Red Faction. Uh, I like for it to have a lot of variety. So it'll generally be a pretty big faction that includes everything from some of the oldest red aircraft in the game to some of the newest. Because I like to get up in the air and, you know, not necessarily know if the aircraft I'm headed towards is, say, like a MiG-19 or if it's a MiG-31. It's two very different aircraft that you have to engage very differently. So I like to, you know, not necessarily know that until I get in the air. The other priority that I'm going to have is going to be difficulty. And difficulty is one of those things that's really easy to mess up if you configure the red faction improperly. Uh, there's a fine line between, you know, like comfortably difficult, challenging yourself and, you know, really pushing yourself to be better and complete masochism where you're up against just way too many aircraft and you're getting your butt kicked all around. Now, I mess with the squadrons a lot whenever I'm setting up a campaign. So I actually have, this is kind of extreme, but I actually have kind of a, a spreadsheet here that I reference whenever I'm looking at red AI. So uh, I have this because I'm really trying to help the red side uh, be a good adversary for my squadron. So generally what I'll do is I'll have like uh, older aircraft, like these kind here. I'll have older aircraft that are easier to fight be further towards us in the theater. And then as we progress through the theater, as we are, you know, sort of nearing the end stages of the campaign, we'll start encountering much more difficult aircraft as we move through. And see, being able to see these scores is really helpful for setting up the squadrons at the beginning and just making sure that each aircraft is assigned a role that it's pretty good at doing. One aircraft I want to draw your attention to in this list here is right here. It's going to be the JF-17. So the JF-17 scores pretty dang high on pretty much every role because it's a it's probably the most modern red aircraft in the game. I think it is. 
And it scores really high on all of these roles because it's pretty dang proficient at all of these roles. So one of the biggest problems that Liberation used to have prior to it would have been 8.0, uh, it used to have a problem with over-purchasing of aircraft. So it would look at, say, the JF-17, and it would say, this is really good at doing everything we need, so we're just going to purchase, like, you know, 40 of them, 100 of them, why not? And it would just purchase a ton of that aircraft because it could do anything it needed to do. And it did this because the squadron limits could be exceeded at will. So before the new squadron rules showed up, those limits didn't mean anything and they could just recruit however many they wanted. When new squadron rules showed up, it alleviated most of that pretty handily. You just need to be aware of it because if you configure your squadron, if you configure a squadron where it can recruit 40 of some aircraft, uh, you might have an issue with it recruiting 40 of some aircraft and none of another, which is something that really frustrated me for a long time because I like a lot of variety when I'm flying. Along the same vein as what we just talked about with uh, too much prioritization of one aircraft, uh, I want to talk about transports because transports can really mess you up. So I like to call it the revolving door of transports. So for example, say you, you get 10, 20 turns into a campaign that you're doing. You've significantly reduced the resources of your enemy. You've taken a bunch of their aircraft down and they have transports up flying around. And what they'll do is, you know, I, I, enjoy shooting down the transports i'll go after a transport i'll shoot it down well now your enemy is only making a little bit of money and they're going to see that they lost a transport and that is going to be the first thing that they purchase and they're not going to spend that money on bar cap aircraft or seed aircraft that they desperately need and this can create an issue where just like every mission you're going up you're shooting down a transport nothing else is happening and you're going and you're landing. Same thing next time. You're just constantly shooting down transports because the AI is prioritizing those transports and not spending that money somewhere else. So what I generally recommend is like when you set up squadrons by default, they usually are going to have like 12 aircraft is going to be the max size. Just knock that down a lot. Uh, I generally have it be like just one or two. I do the same thing with refuelers, and I'll do the same thing with the AWACS aircraft. I like for, if you shoot down an AWACS, I like for it to, you know, feel like, if you get an AWACS shot down, I like for it to feel like you're being penalized for losing that AWACS. You'll have to go a turn without it. And same thing, I'll just generally include one or two AWACS per faction. So the last thing I want to talk about is difficulty. And like I said, it is really easy to mess up difficulty for yourself uh, when you're configuring these squadrons. And it's easy to mess up depending on what you're doing, right? If you're someone that's just, you know, flying around with AI, you're not necessarily flying with other people. You're just using the AI. You're flying missions with the AI. Then you honestly, you could probably just set up like default air wing configurations and hit go and just like not really worry about it. But for me, you know, I'm someone that anytime I'm flying, I'm flying with a squadron and it's generally there'll be like maybe six to maybe like 10 of us on any given flight. And we generally don't employ a lot of friendly AI, right? And it's because friendly AI can kind of get in the way there's unfortunately you can't really communicate with them, right? Once once they start their mission, they fly out and they attempt it. And a lot of times they just die in the process. There's no good way to communicate with the AI and say, hey, back off, we'll re-engage later at a better time. Um, we can't really do that. So we generally don't employ a lot of AI unless it's for like specific jobs. So generally it'll be, you know, six to ten of us. Uh, going up against the enemy faction. And based on, you know, how, what we know of the priority of aircraft, it's going to care about those AWACS, those transports, 
It's going to make sure there's bar cap coverage for all of its control points. And then it's going to use all of its other aircraft for everything else. So for a squadron like mine, where we're just kind of a smaller squadron, if you put too many aircraft into each of the airfields, too many red aircraft into each of the airfields, you can end up really outnumbering yourself really fast. So let's look at an example here. So I've cleared out all of the red squadrons here. So just like kind of a thought experiment here. Just think about it, right? We've got first thing it's going to care about is its AWACS coverage. And it's going to make sure that its airspace is covered with a radar. Next thing it's going to care about is its transports. So we'll put, you know, one of those in. And refueler, you know, we'll, we'll skip over that for now. But then the next thing it's going to care about is bar cap coverage, right? And it's going to do basically one bar cap flight per control point for every 30 minutes of the mission. So I do two hours. So basically for each control point on the map, it's going to want four different bar cap flights to cover the entire duration of the mission. I think I said this in another video, but just to be clear again, uh, anytime the AI is deciding its flights, the AWACS take off and they fly for like six hours. Um, tankers fly for one hour at a time, and then any fighter type of flight is presumed 30 minutes. You know, like a, a strike flight will take like as long as it takes, but uh, generally like bar cap flights, they'll cover the airspace over their control point for 30 minutes at a time. So what I'm saying there is if you have a two hour mission time, it's going to want four flights of two aircraft to cover that airspace. So it might look something like, you know, say the JF-17, we like to have on par cap coverage. We'll, we'll put a squadron in for each of these control points. Okay, so for the sake of the example, I switched over to the Su-33 since it can spawn at the Admiral Kuznetsov, right? Since this is technically considered a control point. So basically, we've got eight aircraft, four flights of two that will cover the bar cap airspace over the Admiral Kuznetsov for the entire duration of the mission, right? Because it's 30 minute flights. So we've got one of these for each different control point. So eight there, eight there, eight there, eight there, eight there, and eight there. And now I, I would need to go through and set these to bar cap, but once the airspace is covered, you know, the mission director is going to say, okay, we've covered all our control points for the entire duration of the mission. Now, everything else will presumably be an aggressor. So you just got to really be careful with it, because if I start adding in a ton of other aircraft here, I'm going to very, very quickly outnumber myself. The amount of missions I've improperly set up where there's just too many red aircraft and then we, you know, we have a plan, you know, one squadron's going to be doing this, one squadron's going to be doing this. We all take off and then we get up and it's like, oh, we're being attacked by 40 different aircraft and we're not going to be able to do those jobs anymore. Everybody's got to land. Everybody's got to get an air to air loadout and just defend our territory. So just be careful of it. It's just something I want to make anybody who's new to liberation, hopefully aware of. I hope all this made sense. Uh, I know a lot of this was more like conceptual rather than technical, how to use the program. Um, but yeah, I hope it helps anybody out there who's just starting out with liberation for the first time. It's something that it took me a lot of time and experimentation to really start to figure out how to actually configure things in a way where I'm not getting my ass kicked, but still, you know, having a good time and up against a challenge. So 
Next time, we're going to be talking about how to actually create a custom faction using that Notepad++ program that we downloaded today. So until then, I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope this helped. And uh, of course, happy flying.